Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, uh, we're going to try to fix a bug that we currently have on our application. It was pointed out by one of you guys on the previous episode. So let's take a look. If I go ahead and I search for something, let's say I'll search for E and I'll scroll down. We currently have six results. So if I go to a different page, we are actually going to lose our search query, right? I can confirm that because now we have seven results, right? We can also check that from the URL. Uh, we kind of lost our search argument, right? So how can we go ahead and fix that? Uh, it's quite an easy fix in Laravel. If you open up our dashboard.blade file where we have our uh, for loop as well as our pagination links. Before we render the HTML for the pagination, we can call in a method called with query string. So this is something that uh, when you call paginate, this method will be av available. And what it will do is basically inject the query string, string at the end of your pagination links. So we can go ahead and test that out. I'll go to page one. I search for E again. And we can see we have six results. I'll go on page two. And yep, you can see it's now working. We still got six out of six results. So that's a very easy fix. And thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so the second issue we have is we don't actually have any way of confirming what we search for, right? So the only way is we actually, if we check the URL, uh, what I like to do is also show what we search for in the search bar, right? Keep it in the search bar. That is also easy to do with Laravel. We can go and find our search bar. I have it right here. This is our input. So we can add a value attribute and inside this we can get whatever the user search for, right? So this is quite easy. We can use the request helper. We've been using it inside our controller. And then this request helper, we can pass it in whatever we wanna get from the URL, right? So I want the search argument or parameter, and then we can pass in it a default of empty and that should do it, okay? So I'll save this, I'll go back and it already is working, right? We can see E here, I'll search for YouTube. I have one idea with YouTube inside. So it's actually working just like that. Okay, we also have one more issue. <laughs> this is the last one. If we search for something like Google, where we have no ideas matching it, usually on most websites, they show like some sort of message or an image here to indicate that, okay, no results found. So let's go ahead and add that as well while we are fixing our search boxes. So I'll open up our dashboard.blade file and there are two ways of fixing it. One way we can maybe add an if statement and then maybe get the count number of items in our ideas uh, collection and then check if it's more than zero. If it is, we display the for each loop. If it's not, we can maybe say uh, no results found, okay? And I'll format this. So we basically do a simple loop to check that we have some results. If we do, we display the for each. If not, we show our no results found message. So let's go take a look. And as you can see, it is actually working. I'll remove Google just like that. Uh, there is a nicer way of doing this, I guess, a bit shorter. And instead of this if statement, and we can actually go ahead and change this for each to something called for else. So I'll type in for else and this end for each should become end for else. And this end for else has an extra directive you can use called empty. And we don't need all of those stuff. And basically, as the name suggests, right, if our for, for loop is empty, it will execute whatever we have inside this empty area, okay? So if we have results, show the loop. If we don't, uh, you know, show some message. So here we can, maybe I'll add a P, I say text center, and then maybe I give it some margin of three, okay? And I say no results found. So let's take a look. And as I can see, this is working, right? I'll give it a bit more margin. I don't like this. All right, so that's it guys. It's super easy. You can from now on use for else whenever uh, you wanna have like an, an else statement for when your loops are empty, you can use this, or if you like, you can use the previous way I showed you using an if statement. It's up to you. 
And yeah, that is all for today, guys. We, I just wanted to cover these three issues that we currently had have on our application. And uh, it's quite easy to fix. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you learned something new. And that's all for today. I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.